Oh, hello there, it's Tom Watkins from Fit Motion Graphics, just giving a brief breakdown of that projection mapping and Resolume Arena. So I'm going to jump straight in, chuck a clip in here just to throw some light on it so I'm not sat in the dark talking to myself, and take you around the um, interface of Resolume really quickly. So, don't want to spend too long on this, but the preferences are useful, some stuff in there, composition settings, deck settings, uh, layers I like, uh, DJ turntables, you have layer 1, layer 2, fade between them. Columns coming down, clips for individual um, videos, and the output is where the mapping is going to happen. That's in the advanced. Uh, mapping, don't get confused by that, that's actually shortcuts uh, like MIDI controllers and keyboard shortcuts, which are very useful. Uh, the view can change the interface there. So we can use these sliders here, so I would recommend getting a MIDI controller for that, and I'll crossfade between the two. Output monitor gives you a preview of what's uh, being sent to the projector, and the preview monitor gives you a preview of what clips you can line up. So uh, composition settings here, drop effects there, uh, layer settings, individual clip settings, you can see you can scratch video there, and files is where you browse stuff from your um, hard drive. Compositions is where you save your collections of decks, clips and effects, and here are the effects themselves, some really good fun stuff in there. But we're going to start off now just by making our own clip from something that's in the sources, so you can all follow at home. So we're just going to drop a lines effect in there, and I'm going to make that animate by dropping down the rotation and clicking on timeline just so that spins around by itself. I'm going to um, bring down the number of lines and bring up the width just to make it a bit chunkier, easier to see. And we'll stick a couple of effects on there just uh, to add a little bit of interest to it. So I'm going to put a bit of colour with a delay RGB on there. Uh, it's just, as it sounds, delays the red, green, blue channels. And also going to put a mirror on to create a bit of symmetry. Uh, absolutely love symmetry and all the stuff that I've featured. So mirror quad is a new one they've just given us. And final effect, just for a little bit more, we'll stick a twist effect on there. Just to make it uh, a little bit more interesting. So twisted is down here. So there's a you know, very simple source effect and a very simple couple of effects. So we'll go into the output settings and we'll have a look at that projection mapping itself. So we'll click on that and the first thing it brings up is the inputs. That's what you're actually going to be sending out. So that's the, uh, you, know, you choose, you could just do a tiny thin slice, you could do a quarter, you could do the whole thing. We're going to do the whole screen and the output is where the actual mapping itself is going to happen. So I'm going to bring up those grids and guidelines there just to be a bit of a... Uh, Guideline makes sense. Uh, we're going to drop that in the four corners, and this is you know the very basic fundamentals of projection mapping right here. It's basically just advanced keystoning, uh, dropping those in the corners, and we could almost call that tutorial done there. You know, we've taken that clip and we've made it fit around the actual structure itself. So I'm just going to put a mask in the middle just to chop off that middle bit of mess. So we're only projecting onto the boxes themselves, and. Not not bad result, just in a you know one minute's worth of mapping that. But we'll do a couple of other uh, options, another couple of structures, just so you know give you some more ideas of things you can play with. So that's one possible way of doing it. I'll make another slice and um, turn these ones down. And we're going to do this one to each of the individual boxes. So instead of doing it to the full structure, we're going to do this to the um, each box itself. So just another possible way of doing it. So. You can imagine this would take a while if you were just going to sit there and watch me drag and drop those. You can uh, save a bit of time by duplicating it and then just control dragging over and then you're tweaking those corners. But it's not going to be the most scintillating video that's ever been seen, so we'll just bring up a version of that that I've already done. So there's that, you know, each clip dragged to each of the corners. I think here uh, you can apply uh, some effects as well, so I'm going to just Flip of each of these corners as well. So I think I've actually already done that. So yeah, that one's flipped, that one's not flipped, and that one is flipped. So that just sort of changes things up a bit, just so it's not the exact same clip being shown. It's actually um, each one itself has been changed. So yeah, you can see what's going on a bit easier without the effects there. Um, that's just the clip's been replicated and sent out. But then when you do have those those effects on, you know. Um, can look up quite interesting and you can just hit these buttons real time live to the music and you're pretty much VJing. So um, I'll turn these turn these effects off and we'll go back in, we'll try uh, another type of sound. So turn those off, we'll go back in, it's Control Shift A, and we'll try uh, even another type. So 
going to make a new slice because of the whole thing. I'm going to turn these individual ones off. And this one I'm going to do to the four corners. So I'm just going to do four different versions of this and turn those guidelines back on. And instead of going to each box or the full output, I'm going to do four kind of quadrants. So again, dragging and dropping these. Get nice and precise when you're doing this properly, but just for the tutorial, I'm getting a ballpark area, that's fine. And I'm going to right click on that, duplicate that, and control click that over. So you can use uh, the arrow keys. Once you've selected one of these, you can actually use the arrow keys to be a bit more precise. But I'm just getting somewhere close to it. Quick word on projectors here. You might think you know you need um, some kick-ass gear for this one, but my projector is only a couple of hundred pounds. I think it's two hundred and fifty off Amazon, and you know it's not it's not the best thing in the world, but it does it does the job just for simple things like this. Um, the more you spend, the better results you will get. Um, the contrast ratio is not brilliant on this. You know, the blacks aren't entirely black, and the uh, throw distance is a little bit limiting. There's been a couple of times where I couldn't actually get um, you know, the projector to cover everything with the distance I was away from it. So if you do have a bit of cash to spend, definitely look at getting um, short throw projectors. Uh, really useful for this kind of thing because then you can be right up close to to the thing you're projecting onto um, and still get the coverage. But you know, if you have just got a couple of hundred pounds to spend, don't think you, you can't actually get involved with this, or you know, just borrow one from college, whatever. So I'm applying those flip effects again and turning these crude guidelines off. And you know, there's just another way to do it. I'll just um, make a mask. I've already made a mask there. Put the stick that on top just to cut that middle bit out again. And we'll go back to the main interface. And as you can see here. Um, you know, really simple effects, really simple clips, really simple mapping, but you can get some you know, pretty pretty interesting things on the go, you know, just in a couple of minutes of playing out. So I would definitely definitely recommend using these um, dashboard drop downs for using these sliders as well. Get that mapped to a MIDI controller and it's a lot more fun than using just your mouse and the buttons. But you, know, you still can do it for that. So that's um, just projection mapping with um, sources and effects that are built into Resolume. The real power of this though does come from making your own clips that are designed around the thing that you're projecting onto. So I think I've got one here and chuck that on there and I'll... and we'll... Oop, don't need to do that. Turn these ones off and go to the full output again and you can see what I've done here is I've replicated the actual boxes that exist in the room in uh, 3D software and I've made them spin around in Cinema 4D and then when you project those onto the boxes in the room you can get that kind of optical illusion that it's the boxes that you're in the room with are spinning around and that's where the real power of this technique comes in. But it's maybe a bit much to cover in just this one tutorial so it's just taking you through uh, the output settings there and the Resolume interface. Do get yourself to the site, you can download it for free, uh, but it does come watermarked. Get yourself, borrow a projector, and um, get yourself any cardboard boxes and start playing around. So, thanks for tuning in. You know, do come back next time. We'll uh, have a look, little bit more look at um, custom making clips that actually uh, work with the structure that we've got. And uh, thanks for tuning in. So, Tom Watkins from Fit Motion Graphics. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Cheers.